What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. Man, it feels like it's been forever since I've said that. But today we are taking a look at a new product. It is my Gazelle G5 five-sided gazebo. I've already used the T4 hub tent from Gazelle and I actually loved it enough to purchase another one of their products. So we're gonna look at the pros and cons. We're gonna look at my initial impressions because I've only actually assembled this thing like three times, I think. And uh, so we're gonna take a look at all that stuff today. Now, why has it been a while since I've done my little YouTube introduction? Well, because I've been working on the Colorado Expedition uh, on the YouTube channel for the past, I'd say, two months. Um, I've gotten all those videos out. It's a seven part series. If you're interested in seeing that adventure from Connecticut to Colorado and then all the overlanding we did in Colorado, head over to my YouTube channel to check that out. But if you're only here for the Gazelle product, the G5 Gazebo, stick around. So let's start right off the bat with the major question, the reason why most people become interested in the Gazelle uh, tent and the Gazelle gazebo, which is how fast it can be assembled. Um, I know that the tents are advertised to be assembled in something like 90 seconds, uh, and I'm sure the gazebos are not far behind as far as what they're advertised for, but I would like to show you how long it actually takes, just like I did for my T4 hub tent video, which, by the way, if you haven't seen that, go check out my Gazelle T4 hub tent video. Another little shameless plug right there. I love it. You're not gonna get away from it. I'm gonna send you to my channel, so please help me out. But anyway, uh, how long does it actually take? So I wanna show you my time lapse. Uh, we're gonna rewind really quick to when I was actually assembling this thing, probably like 10 minutes ago. I'm gonna play that clip, and then we're gonna go into uh, some of the cons. We're gonna go with the uh, bad stuff first and then we'll go into the pros. So just like with the uh, T4 hub tent, I'm going to use a stopwatch so that you can honestly see how long it takes me to set this up. So, here we go. All right, so I gotta be honest, that was, that was quicker than I expected it to be. I got two minutes, two minutes, 11 seconds. I'd say that's an honest representation about how fast it does take, aside from one key component, which would be the support poles that go in front of like the main entrance. Um, I did not put those in yet, but I'm gonna explain that in a second. So minus the support poles, it takes about two minutes for someone who is still fairly new to it. So, I'm gonna grab the camera and uh, we'll start walking around. I'll explain a little bit more. All right, so once you've assembled the gazebo, there are a couple pieces that you're left over with. There are also support poles inside the bag. So this is the only other piece that you would essentially need to complete the gazebo. And in the two minutes it took me to assemble it, I did not attach the support poles. Some people online will tell you that you don't really need them at all. I personally do use them. So inside, you will find there are these little Velcro pieces right here. They kind of make like a little, uh, little circle. 
okay? One in the center, there's a little pocket at the bottom, and then there's another little pocket at the top, and it might be hard to tell, but it fits up, the pole fits up inside there like that. So you uh, assemble the poles, they're typical tent poles, you know, they have that like little uh, elastic or wired band between them. So they're folded in half right now. You just assemble one, put it in the pole, uh, the, the hole on the bottom, use the Velcro here, stick it in the hole on the top, and then you do the same thing on the opposite side. And what it does is it will provide support for either side of the main entrance. There is not a, a support pole that goes across the top. Um, I believe the G6 six-sided gazebo from Gazelle does have a support pole that goes over the top. So other than the support poles, the only other thing that comes within the bag is the little pouch that stores the guy lines and the uh, tent stakes. So if you're familiar with Gazelle tents, it's pretty much the same situation. Um, the guy lines are meant to be attached to either this little ring right here, or you could just do the uh, pulley tab. And then the stakes are meant to go inside of these small little rings beneath the little rain skirt that they give you. I think the biggest drawback would be the support poles, the ones that I just mentioned, that you need to put into uh, the sides of the main entryway. You don't actually need them in order to pop the gazebo open. So it's not like they're 100% needed in order to assemble your shelter and get out of the elements. Um, but once it is up, I would absolutely recommend that you install them, right? And it's really not that long. It doesn't take more than uh, 30 seconds, I'd say, to, to put one of the poles in place and then put the other pole in place. Now, another notable drawback or negative, I guess you could say, for this gazebo would be the ceiling. If you're familiar with any Gazelle products, you will know that their tents always have a pull tab or a string that hangs from the ceiling up here. Um, and I know some of you are gonna be like, really, that's a negative of yours. And truthfully, I'm just grasping at straws, trying to find some of the bad things. But there's no pull tab. When you're disassembling the whole thing, the walls are easy, right? You just stand on the outside and you push it. But when it comes to the ceiling, you're not pulling on the center, you're not pulling on the string that would be here. Instead, you have to pull on the support poles. And uh, I'm sure it's fine, but it was a little, it was, I was curious about it. It was a little surprising to see that there was nothing, nothing on the ceiling to pull from in order to collapse the roof. All right, so we got some of the drawbacks out of the way. Now let's focus on the positives. And I'd say the number one positive is the gazebo is both shorter and lighter than the T4 hub tent, which would be the closest comparable gazelle tent to this gazelle gazebo. So if there was any question about whether or not this product uh, could be moved easily, it's fairly light. I'll put the uh, actual weight on the screen right now. And as far as where you can store it, uh, it is shorter than the T4 hub tent. Uh, and certainly it's shorter than a lot of the bigger tents. So it can go into the bed of a truck. And I'd imagine it could also go into, you know, the back of your SUV. So one of the other big positives about this gazebo is the fact that the rain fly on the top is attached. It's a built in rain fly. It's part of the roof. It's part of the entire gazebo, you don't actually have to uh, take the rain fly out of the bag and then toss it on top. Um, I mentioned about the T4 hub tent when I did that review and, and most of the other gazelle tents that having a removable rain fly was a positive. And I think for the most part, it, it could be considered a positive, but I did point out during my camping trip up to Massachusetts in the middle of a rainstorm that when you assemble your tent while there's precipitation, uh, it can cause a problem with the removable rain fly because if you don't get the rain fly on fast enough, then obviously, you know, the rain could come into the tent. But the gazebo would be different because it has the built-in ceiling, the built-in rain fly. It's not something you need to add 
on top of it as you assemble it so you don't have to worry about rain or anything else falling you know into the tent or I should say gazebo as you're assembling it it's all one piece uh, it's velcroed on the side, but even if you remove the velcro, it's still stitched into place. It's not something that you have to worry about. It's not an additional component that you need to throw on to the gazebo. And the last thing I want to mention, the last positive that I can think of, and obviously if you think of more, feel free to comment down below, but the last positive would be that there are extra accessories, additional components that you can purchase to include with your gazebo. Okay, and I'm pointing at the ground right now because one of them is a footprint um, or I guess you could you could consider it like a flooring, you know, a mat that you can put down uh, and it, it attaches all the way around, kind of covers the whole square footage of the gazebo to kind of offer more of a inside atmosphere, I guess you could say. You know, you could keep things clean. Um, you could take your shoes off once you walk in. And then on top of that, in addition to the footprint, you can also purchase walls, um, like windscreens that you can attach to the sides of your gazebo. So you'll see all of these Velcro pieces along the outside, and that's to offer additional protection. So you get a giant wind wall piece of canvas that goes over this section, attaches to your Velcro here, additional Velcro up here on the top. Hold everything in place and once you include the footprint flooring and then the walls around the outside this gazebo could essentially serve the same purpose of a tent and I find that to be um, very cool it's it's a versatile piece of camping equipment so yeah that's basically everything I've got for this g5 five-sided gazebo there is also a g6 six-sided gazebo uh, so some of you might wonder, like, why did I go with this versus the larger gazebo? And uh, truthfully, this is this is just enough size for us. Uh, most of the time, it's going to be me, my wife, the dog. Uh, it's got plenty of space. We also have an awning on top of our our overland vehicle, so we'll also be using that, you know, in addition to this. Um, but I did use this a few weeks ago when I went on a small camping trip with a few friends. There were four of us. And we were able to sit all four of us inside of this gazebo with a portable fire pit in the center. And I'm going to try to put some of that footage on the screen right now. I'm not kidding when I say that there was a significant temperature difference inside the gazebo with that small fire going versus outside the gazebo. And it kind of baffled me because the walls are, you know, that, that mesh screen. Uh, we did not put up the the wind screens. I do have those. It came with like this small little sail when I purchased the gazebo, uh, and I didn't put them up. So I was I was really kind of like surprised stepping into the gazebo, feeling how warm it stayed in there uh, with that small fire going versus outside. And it was a fall day. It was only two weeks ago. Uh, we're near the end of October right now, so I'm not sure what the overnight low was, but at that time it was probably in the mid 40s I'd like to say uh, just using the the small portable fire pit it really impressed me it really impressed me so I would definitely recommend uh, the g5 five-sided gazebo we are going to use it I am going to uh, do my best to include it with even our our winter camping trips but anyway g5 five-sided gazebo awesome stuff thanks for sticking around I'll see you next time peace people